Welcome back everybody to part 8 of our Unity Beginners tutorial series. In the last episode we created a simple main menu for our project and in this episode we're going to create a simple live system that will allow us to have a few attempts at succeeding in our levels. So it's pretty straightforward, let's begin. Returning to our scene level 1, we want to create two new components for our live system. One a head up display that's going to portray the information on screen and two a lives manager much like we have our game manager here which overlooks in-game processes we're going to do the same but for one that specifically deals with anything to do with our live system so we know where to reference it when we need to call upon it to do that go ahead right click in the hierarchy create an empty game object always remember reset its position and we'll call this one our lives manager lives manager there we go and we also need to have a new canvas as well for a head up display so right click ui canvas there we are and like we did with game over and victory we want our screen space to be camera drag our camera in there and scale with screen size and we want to match at 0.5 Excellent, there we are. And inside our canvas, we'll create another empty game object. And we'll call this one Lives. Because in the future, we might want other head-up display elements like a score or ammo count. So it's always good practice to keep everything within our canvas organized, much like we do with our hierarchy. And you'll see this box also. Let's extend that to fit the size of our camera. It will auto snap, so do not worry about being too accurate. It will fit. Excellent, there we go. Now we can start designing our lives counter for our head up display. We can use an image of our idle sprite to symbolize how many credits or lives we have left. So let's go ahead, right click in lives, UI and image. There we are. And where it says source image, none, we can put in a sprite. So go ahead to our sprites, find our character's idle sprite, and drag it into that box. Done. Easy. And you may notice that it is behind our level. That shouldn't be, as we want everything on our head-up display to be at the forefront. To change that, just simply go to the canvas, and you see here we have a planar distance. That's the distance to how far away the canvas is to the camera. So at the minute, it's 100 units away, so let's bring that a lot closer to 1. There we are, it's now at the front. Go back to our canvas here, and let's move our image to the, the top left. There we are, and we're going to want to resize it as well. So use the scale tool, resize it however you like. I think that looks good. I'm just going to put that a little bit more flush in the corner there that's great excellent now i want to show you something just over here near where it says display one you can see we have an aspect ratio 16 9 if we were to open up the drop down box and choose 16 10 you can see that the canvas elements in our scene shift and change this is because we have it set to scale with screen size but you see that our icon there isn't flush in the corner like we originally set it. Go back to 16.9 and go to our lives component and we can set an anchor for that so we can fix it in the corner regardless of screen size so it looks nice and flush regardless of scale. Click inside, it's currently set anchored at the center. We click top left corner there, go back and resize our screen again. You can see that it'll stay in the corners nice and neat so no need to worry about the size or the resolution of the screen we're going to be playing on with our icon in place we're going to want some text to go along with that to show how many lives we have remaining so in lives right click ui text let's change the color to white so we can see it clearly increase font size to say 25 and we can call it whatever you like really. I'm just going to call it lives because this will change 
in the script we're going to write in a moment and I'm going to position it just next to our icon you don't have to be too fussy right now you can adjust that as you like later in the project and then go to scripts right click create C sharp script and we'll call this one lives manager and once that's compiled go ahead and prepare our lives manager by dragging it onto our lives manager there we are double click to open up visual studio and let's go before we start inputting our values and functions because we're dealing with ui we're going to want to access the unity engine.ui class in the same way we accessed unity engine.scene management in the last video for our main menu so at the top we go just underneath and say using unity engine dot ui there we go now we can crack on so at the top here let's input some values we'll have a public int and int is a whole number and we'll call this one default lives and we'll also have another one which will be public int lives counter the lives counter will be the number that's represented within our text on our hood. We're also going to want to make a reference to said text by saying public text with a capital T and we'll call it lives text. And we're going to want to make a reference to our game manager, which has our game over function, because when our lives decrease below a certain value, we want game over to take place. So say private game manager, we can call that the GM. There we go. So go ahead to our start function now and let's state what our lives counter is going to be. So we'll say that lives counter equals default lives. So whatever number our default lives is, our live counter will match that. End with semicolon. And we're going to want to call upon our game manager so like we've done before we'll say the game manager the gm equals find object of type inside the pointed brackets here we'll put our game manager end with open close brackets semicolon there we go over to our update function now we want to write a line of code that's going to change the value represented by our text in our head up display so to do that let's call upon lives text dot text equals and open up some quotation marks here we're going to put x for multiply and in space in the area where we put that space will go our lives counter value so outside of it outside of our quotations just type in plus lives counter there we go so as our lives counter increases or decreases it will change accordingly below that let's write an if statement to call upon game over when we hit a certain life count so type in if lives counter is less than one we'll say so as soon as we hit zero we've got no lives remaining game over so let's call upon that shall we the gm dot game over and then end with open close brackets because we're calling on a function and quotation marks there we go now at the moment there's no functions in place that are going to subtract or add a value to our lives counter so underneath update we're going to write those functions so we'll go public void We'll call this one take life. There we are. And we can just copy that, paste it underneath. And you may have already guessed, we'll call this one add life. There we are. So, what do we want to say? Well, if we hit a spike or an enemy, we want to subtract one life. To do that, we'll say that our lives counter is minus minus and there we go minus minus basically means it will deduct a value of one and for add life 
we just do the opposite. We'll say that lives counter is plus plus. There we go. So if we call upon our take life function, it will subtract one from our lives counter. If we call upon our add life function, it will add one to our lives counter. So let's start putting one of these functions into action. For now, we're gonna focus on the take life function. So save your code. Let's go into player controller. And where it's got public game manager, the GM, we of course wanna call upon take lives function from the lives manager. So we will put private lives manager, the LM. There we are. And of course, we'll call upon that in our start function as we have to. So the LM equals find object of type in the pointed brackets, lives manager. There we go. And if we go all the way to the bottom now, to our on trigger enter 2D, where if our player characters collider hits a spike, it brings up the game over screen, we no longer want to use that anymore. We want to call upon that take life function to subtract one from our lives counter. We can either delete this line entirely, or we may want to keep it to refer back to at a later date, but have it void. We simply, at the beginning of the line, two forward slash like that. Now that line of code is no longer valid and it won't affect our script. Now underneath, we are just gonna put the lives manager dot take life. There we go. Called upon our take life function. So when we hit spikes, it will deduct one from our lives counter. Save the code, go back into Unity. And before we can play test, we've got to set a few things up in the inspector. So if we go to our lives manager, there we go. We can now see default lives and lives counter. Whatever value we put in default lives, such as free, that will be the value of our lives counter because it will equal that at the start of our scene. And here is where we put our lives text, which is here in our lives game object. So drag that text into there like that. There we are. Now, if you press play, we can now run around and we can see that our lives counter is now X free, which is great. Now let's hit the spikes to test if it works. Oosh, one, two, three, and there we are. Game over, that works. Now, you will encounter a problem for when we hit replay, nothing happens. That's because our lives counter is still at zero. It's not being reset back to the default, which is calling upon the game over function. But not to worry, we're going to address that in the next video where we're gonna expand upon our lives manager with adding a respawn, as well as how we change setting our default lives by using what's known as player preferences. Thank you very much guys for watching. If you see the value in these videos and have been helpful to you in any way at all, please consider subscribing to the channel below, as well as following us on Instagram and Twitter at Xbox Studios, where you can hit us up with any questions you may have. Also, in the description below, there will be a link to where you can download copies of the code to check and cross-reference with yours at home to make sure you're on the right track. Thank you very much, guys. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.